If you've followed me for long enough, you may be familiar with my past frustrations with Bandai Namco. If you're a fan of series like Tekken, Tales of, Soul Calibur, or Dark Souls, you should probably count yourself lucky for how consistently well you've been treated throughout the last decade. And nothing against those series I've just mentioned, I'm pretty sure they're great even though I haven't ventured much into them. I mean, I have played a little bit of Tekken, but yeah, unless you're a fan of those series that I mentioned, or their licensed anime games, then chances are you've had it rough since your favorite Namco series has probably either been dead in the water, or have been stripped of so much of what made it special and reduced to its very basic elements, only to be used as merchandise fodder and have mediocre cash grab titles spewed out on a consistent basis. But hey, who cares about that? We got a new One Piece game, baby! Okay, so I can't be too negative on their anime games because, well, I do have fond memories of playing Dragon Ball Universe 2 with friends during the freshman days. But my main point is that a good chunk of their series, mainly their main mascot franchise, has had ghastly treatment for the past decade or more. And the idea that they have become more known for their licensed titles than their original IPs just screws with my head. It's like if you had a pizza place you went to as a kid. They had a large variety of toppings and pizza sauces. And they were great pizzas too! But then they were brought out by a million dollar corporation, and they filled the menu with things like burgers, fries, and severely cut down on the pizza to the point where the only options are cheese and pepperoni. Okay, okay, so my tone so far has been pretty negative and cynical. But this video isn't meant to be negative, because lately they've been doing some cool shit with their IPs. Previously, we've got remasters like Katamari Reroll, but now this year we have Pac-Man Museum Plus and Klonoa Fantasy Reverie. With installments like these, I have somewhat of a good reason to believe that steps are possibly being taken to bring in a renaissance for Bamco's original IPs, mainly concerning the two that are the subject of this video. But... There's also a caveat with things like these, and I'll get into those as well. Regardless, how about that Pac-Man Museum Plus? Most of you may know that I'm pretty excited for this. I mean, if my stupid ass reaction video where I'm so excited I make incomprehensible animal noises isn't of any indication, then I don't know what is. But come on guys, this reaction is warranted. After all the crap I, as a Pac-Man fan, had to go through, this is a reprieve. Yeah, after Ghost Adventures crashed and burned, it pretty much took Pac-Man's heart along with it. In terms of game quality, well, at best you have games that are functional on a surface level, but at the core are very fundamentally flawed, or are just the original again, but with a new wacky gimmick, and at worst you have games that do not work at all. And ugh, do I need to talk about all the games that were removed or became lost media? Or all the games that are stuck on services nobody gives a shit about? Then there's the overall representation of the series which has been depressing. Now, I mean no disrespect to the original arcade game. It's a masterpiece that's absolutely held up, and an important contribution to gaming as a whole. However, reducing the series identity to just that one game and to more or less disregard everything that came after that is a huge disservice to the franchise, practically reducing it to the status of that one arcade game from the 80s that boomers bring up every once in a while. But Pac-Man is more than that. Pac-Man is the original arcade game, yes, but it's also Super Pac-Man, Pac-Land, Pac-Mania, Miss Pac-Man, screw out games by the way, Pac-Man Arrangement, Pac-N Pal, the Pac-Man World Games, Pack and Roll, the Championship Edition games, the Ghost of the Adventures duology, and much, much more. This is why Museum Plus is so refreshing. Something that just doesn't celebrate one game, but rather celebrates the franchise. Just look at the beautiful box art with all the references that are shown here. Look at the unlockables you can get, like statues of characters like Professor Pack and Chomp Chomp. I haven't seen those guys in years. Deleted mobile games don't count. And look! It's the peak Chomp Chomp design from Pac-Man World! Speaking of world, look at those idle animations from World 1! I was one of the first people to point this out, by the way. And then there's the game selection. Pac-Man Arrangement 96 hasn't gotten an official re-release in more than a decade, so having it here is fantastic. 
Plus, it's likely to be a more arcade accurate re release too. Pack and Roll Remix, Pack Motos, Pac Man Battle Royale, and the original Championship Edition becoming more accessible is really, really awesome! 256 being here is. something, I suppose. And even though Packing Time SNES is really bad, it getting a re release for once is nice. Though Pac Man 2 not being here is disappointing to me. Would have preferred that over 256. But overall, 14 games is a lot! Not only is the selection great, but as an overall package, it's going above and beyond. This also has a 3D arcade you can roam around in, that serves as a hub to select each of the games, and can be customized and decorated. There's a mission mode that allows you to earn coins that you can also use to buy decorations and be used as credits for the games. There's so much going on with this, and a lot to look forward to. But I would be lying if I said there weren't some exclusions that didn't slightly bother me. I mentioned the lack of Pac-Man 2 already, but there's also the lack of Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man World. Granted, I understand they're lacking presence. With the former, all that is because of TWAT Games legal fuckery. The fact that crap hasn't been sorted out is insane and stupid as hell to me. It's even gone as far as to affect Pac-Land, as they replaced Miss Pac Sprite with the new Pac-Mom character. This type of historical revisionism bugs the hell out of me. But hey, we can thank Crap Games for this! With Pac-Man World not being here, my speculation for that is a bit more layered. One could cite the at-game situation as a possible reason given Miss plays a role in the game, but it also could be a pricing situation. World, if World was brought in, it would up the price from $20. As is, the world games are notable enough to get their own collection. And hey, why wouldn't you make another compilation? You'd make more money that way, than if you were to group it in here. This also... ties into speculation of possible Pac-Man World Remakes. I mean, I'm not gonna jump to the conclusion that we're getting World Remakes, but like... There's the idle animations, the platform momentum Pac has in the overworld, the character models for Professor and Chomp Chomp, and the whole Pac-Man world field that Pac-Man's model has in this game. I mean, I'm not saying this is a Sonic Jam scenario, but it sure does feel like one. Perhaps it would be wise to not get your hopes up, but chances are, I'm probably gonna do that anyway. But yeah, Museum Plus is really tapping into many sides of the Pac-Man series, even going as far as to have references to Pac-Man World. It just looks like a quality product with a lot of love put into it. An expression of genuine love for the Pac-Man franchise. One might say it's disproportionate to be this excited for a game collection, but a closer look would say otherwise. After all the bullshit, after all the fandom drama, and after all the disrespect from the gaming community, we are finally getting a reprieve! We are starting to eat good! And now, let's talk about the comeback of the decade, Klonoa Fantasy Reverie. Klonoa is a series that's been rightfully revered, but it's spent more than 10 years neglected, all thanks to some commercial issues. The original did pretty well as far as I know, but the sequels experienced diminishing returns in terms of sales. This includes the fan favorite, Klonoa 2, Lunatea's Veil. Vale. A cause for these diminishing returns is of course poor marketing. After all, this is Namco we're talking about. After the Bandai merger, there was an attempt to bring the series back with a remake on the Wii. There were... some... mistakes made? Wahoo! Get ready for an exciting adventure you help Konoha save Phantomite, a magical world created by everyone's dreams. Use the Wind Bolt to grab your enemies and a Wii V remote to throw them. I'm Klonoa from Wind Village! And as you can guess, the marketing didn't do it any Boy, favors. Help Klonoa save the captured dreams of Phantom Isle by uh, jumping... Why is this commercial so bad? Despite these commercial problems, Klonoa still has a strong and passionate fanbase. There's a definite love for the character. I mean, he has a charm to him that seems to just keep him alive. And throughout the 2010s, there were attempts to keep him alive. There was an official comic series and it was cancelled and left on the cliffhanger. There was an anime movie in the works, and that was also cancelled. Yeah, it's safe to say that the series and its fanbase went through quite the ringer. 
but a glimmer of hope had shined when a trademark for Klonoa Encore had appeared. There was speculation as to what this was, but it would remain elusive for a long time. Then comes the February Nintendo Direct of this year. And... well, I'll just play the clip. Oh my god! For a niche series like this to gain so much relevance and hype is absolutely splendid! Especially for a series as deserving of it as Klonoa. It goes to show that actually marketing your shit can go a long way! These games are great, and Klonoa has such an adorable and appealing design. Just give it the proper and sincere marketing that's respectful of the source material, and then you'll be rolling in that dough! Oh, and would you look at that! As it's, it's doing extremely well with its pre-orders! Even selling out in some countries! I can honestly see Klonoa becoming Bamco's next cash cow, along with the likes of Tales of and Tekken. And you know what? I'm all for that! Especially if it gets us Klonoa 3! It also really helps that these games are being properly portrayed. They're not being represented as whimsical kitty corny BS, but rather, they're shown as being fun, cute, and colorful adventures with layers of sincerity, sophistication, world building, and so much more. We're actually shown what these games are about, and it's done in a sincere manner, which is a big, and let me stress, a big step up from whatever the hell this was supposed to be. So you can save the world of Phantom Isle. Klonoa from Namco Bandai Games, only on the Wii. Now, I'm just gonna say that those who are going into door to Phantom Mile blind for the very first time are in for quite the whiplash. <laughs> On the subject of Fantasy Reverie itself, I'm most certain that the version of Door to Phantom Mile that's used here is the Wii Make, but drastically overhauled. It seems they've acknowledged the criticisms that the Wii Make got like the overall drabness of the environments, and went ahead rectifying those. It looks so much better, and they even gave Klonoa his PS1 look. With Lunatea's Veil, they pretty much redone the entire game from the ground up. They really went the extra mile, and it looks great! Aside from some overuse of bloom effects. Now I will say that the graphical styles of the original releases for Door to Phantom Mile and Lunatea's Veil will, to me at least, always remain distinct and timeless, and well, given that I still have yet to play Lunatea's Veil, vale, go out, I'm probably gonna go out of my way to play the original PS2 version first, even if it might cost me quite a bit. But that's just a me thing. Not everyone is gonna be willing to pay the amount of money one would pay to play the original releases for these games. I mean, I'm lucky to have gotten Door to Phenomile as early as 2013, when it wasn't that expensive. Also, this is a brand new release, and a series that hasn't had one in years, so you damn well know I'm gonna support the fuck out of this. And I'm going to ensure everyone else does too. Fact of the matter is, not only are these games being made more accessible, but they're also going that extra mile with the new graphics, as well as the accessibility options that could make the game easier or harder depending on your preference. Also, being that this is a modern release, of course there will be trophies. Which isn't a big deal, and I know not everyone will care, but it gives extra objectives that would add longevity to these games. Aside from those, I'm not sure of any other new features they have planned, but with all they are doing, this should more or less be a fresh way to re-experience these old titles. So yeah, it's great to actually be excited for not just upcoming Pac-Man stuff, but also Klonoa. They're not new games necessarily, well, Museum Plus kind of is with its overworld stuff. But point is, these are upcoming quality products for both a series that's fallen off in recent years, and a series that's been dead for more than a decade. Their existence could very well lead to brand new, bigger and better things, which is what I'm hoping for. But, there's still a level of uncertainty to be had. You don't know if these could be one-time things, with Bamco going back to their usual BS. But honestly, I'd rather be positive here. Klonoa is doing stupidly well in terms of pre-orders, 
that it would be ridiculous to not follow that up with Klonoa 3 or something along those lines. And all those world animations and character models are a bit too on the nose. Like, they couldn't have just been made for the sake of a simple game collection. So, only time can tell. All we can do now is support these in hopes of getting something greater. So yeah! Support Museum Plus, and support Klonoa Fantasy Reverie. And I've said everything I needed to say. Until next time, I will see you all later.